program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company from confidential police files. Oakland police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 70, regarding a murder. That's all. Gasoline. Oh, has the city changed gasoline? I didn't know. No, you'd know the difference if you were driving police cars regularly. All the drivers are nuts about this new gasoline. It starts so fast. And look how it accelerates. Hey, I never got speed like this with the old gasoline. Well, this hill will slow you up. Are all the open police cars using Rio Grande gasoline now? Yep. New city orders. All police cars, all fire engines, all emergency equipment. They've all switched to Rio Grande crack. The Berkeley police and fire departments are using Rio Grande, too. Yeah, you know, it looks like all the cities are using it. I hear that Los Angeles police cars are using it for the third consecutive year now. And no wonder. Look how he breezed up that hill. In high, all the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have been in second gear with that old gasoline. Rio Grande sure got the power. Hey, I can feel the difference. You suppose Rio Grande makes a special gasoline for a police car? Oh, no. It's the same gasoline you get from their independent dealers. You know, I'm using it now on the family bus, and I'm getting wonderful results. Just drive into any service station that advertises Rio Grande cracked gasoline, and you'll get the same gasoline as these police cars to use it. Holy that we're here already. All right, blow up. Look out the trouble. And now we take you to San Francisco, where Chief Bodie Wallman of the Oakland Police Department will speak to you from the studios of KFRC. Chief Wallman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you who are regular listeners to Calling All Cars must have come to the realization that the average criminal is a pretty sorry fellow. He doesn't win. He never comes out ahead. And for the most part, he doesn't use much originality in the conception an execution of his crime. In telling the story of crime, the activities of the police are almost always the most interesting. But occasionally there occurs a case where the story of the man involved is the focal point of interest. Such is the story that we have to tell tonight. You will not hear a story reeking with blood and melodrama and complicated with detective work Instead, we will tell the story of a man, a man endowed with the attribute of greatness, but unable to cope with the bitter realities of life. Gonna make it come out. What? Carlos, I must speak with you. Did I not tell you not to disturb me? Did I not tell you to leave me alone? Yes, Carlos, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the baby has no milk. Oh, and... oh dear. When I am composing the most difficult passage of my symphony, 
You dare to bother me about milk. I'm sorry, Carlos, but we must have money. Money, money, that is all I hear. Why not earn money for you? Yes, Carlos. You have been a good husband. But until you quit your job three months ago... Oh, you accuse me. No, Carlos, I don't accuse you. Your voice was accusing. How could I go on in that job any longer? How could I continue to work in that music store? Selling pianos to people who will never play them. Listen to big talk Beethoven. But within me sang a great melody. A great symphony. Burning, searing my soul. Bursting the bonds of my brain. Demanding to be written down that all the world might hear it. Yes, Carlos, I know all that. And but... I borrow money on my beautiful diamond ring so that you and the child could eat? Carlos, Pay those people with all that money. It is all gone, Carlos. There is no more money. And get some more. Go out and walk the streets. Get it any way you like. Do not bother me. Carlos, you must listen to me. We must have money. Get out. Get out or I'll kill you with my two bells. Carlos. You heard me. Do not want to be annoyed. Get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> A few days later, Carlos Madro is walking along a street in Oakland, wrapped in thoughts of his symphony, when he is hailed by a passerby. Hello, Madro. Oh. oh, hello, Senor Harry. Oh, you're just the man I wanted to see. A uh, matter of fact, I've been looking for you for several days. Oh, see? Yes, regarding that loan I made you. Now, it's a month overdue, and you haven't even paid me the interest on it. Now, I'll have to have that money. Money, money. Do not talk to me about money. Well, I know it's a disagreeable subject, my bro. A root of all evil, as the Bible says. Hmm? And I dare say the Bible's right, too. But uh, it's what makes the world go round, you know. That ring I gave you as security. It was many times the money you lent me. A ring is worth thousands of dollars. But I can't tie up my funds with any ring. Now, if you don't pay me cash, why, I'll just have to sell the ring for what I can get out of it. Sell the ring? No, you would not tell to that. Why not? My mother gave me that ring. It was worn by my father when he was at the court of the key in Madrid. It was the last of my father's treasure. Well, I can't help that, my bro. I can't let sentiment interfere with business, you know. The ring, the ring it is valuable to me. I will claim it someday. When my symphony is complete, I will have that money. I will be the most famous musician in the world. And I will pay you your money twice, three times over. No, I can't count on promises, Madro, but I tell you what I will do. I'll give you until day after tomorrow. And if you don't pay up then, why, I'll just have to sell the ring. No, no, you cannot do that. Oh, yes, I can, and I will. Very well. I get the money. Now you're talking. Come to my house. Tomorrow afternoon. Bring the ring with you. That's fine, Madro. I'll be there, say, around three o'clock. Three, three o'clock. Three. Three o'clock would be a good a time as any. Dr. Three, as, as you can see. Yeah, I expect you would be on time. You have the money? Please. Come in. Thank you. Into my studio here. Mm -hmm. You have got the ring? Mm -hmm. Right here in the pocket. Oh, no. Sit down, Senor Harris. Before we conclude our dealings, uh, there is something I want you to hear. Of my symphony. Do you not think the world will pay to hear that? Do you not think that money will pour in from that? Money to pay you? Now, look here, Mondo. I haven't time to waste. I have other appointments this afternoon. Now, I came here in good faith, and you promised that you would pay me. I will pay you. But you have not answered my question. What do you think of my symphony? Well, now I can't say, Mandro. I don't know much about this classical stuff. I lean more to ragtime and uh, Terry Jacobs. I don't 
don't care who makes this law. Oh, I well, I mean, give the people something they can whistle or something they can dance to. You do not think the breaking heart of mankind sings in this? Do not think the heavy feet of destiny done through these measures? <laughs> Oh, of course, I don't know much about music, just like I said. <laughs> you know, I'm just a plain businessman. Hey, I say, shut up, listen. Listen to humanity on the rack. Listen to the century, street mockery. Listen to mankind the revolt. Listen to the waking of the world. Listen to the crushing of oppression. appointments this afternoon. Now, 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 this demonstration's gone far enough. If you kindly pay me just as you promised, I'll turn over your rings so you'll now dealing will be at an end. Mr. Mr. Hurry! Mr. Come on, Jane, Now, look here, man, I... Oh, Senor. Our dealings are at an end. Hey, pardon me, Inspector Warman, but there's a woman outside. I think you'd better talk to her. Oh, what's her trouble? Yeah, she says she's afraid of her husband. Probably be a better place if more women were the same way. Now, uh, you take care of her, Sergeant. I've got a lot of things on my mind. Yeah, well, this is important, Inspector. She's afraid her husband's going to kill her. Uh, well, that's a little different. I suppose the perfect homicide squad should prevent murders as well as solve them, huh? Eh? I'm sure, and yes, sir. Will you come in, ma'am? Thank you. This gentleman here will take care of them. Thank you. Uh, are you the chief? Well, no, not yet, but I have hope. Uh, well, what can I do for you? I'm frightened. I'm scared of my husband. So the sergeant told me. Why are you frightened of your husband? Well, last week he threatened to tell me when I asked him for money to buy milk for our baby. And today, when I came home, he had his diamond ring back and he tried to get me to go into his studio with him. He said, look, I got it back. Oh, there's a funny look in his eyes. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what's the diamond ring to do with it? Well, well, you see, he borrowed some money on his diamond ring so we could eat. And he didn't have any money to redeem it. I don't know how he got it back. Well, how do you suppose he obtained it? Oh, I'm afraid to think. But he threatened to kill me. Maybe he killed Mr. Harris, the man who lent him the money. Well, why didn't you ask him where he got the ring? No, I was afraid of it. He's afraid of he kept telling me to come into the studio, and he never lets me in there. I see. Well, well, we'll just uh, calm your fears. I think Inspector Kai and I better see you home. Inspectors Wallman and Kyle take Carlos Bobbio to headquarters. 
For two hours, they questioned him in the presence of Chief of Police Peterson. Never does Mudro deny his guilt, but seems, on the contrary, not to be listening to the questions of the other. Ceaselessly, he hums his symphony, trying to impress its melody and harmony into his brain, so that later he may write it down. When apparently for the first time the officer's questions penetrate his brain, Mardro makes a simple confession explaining in detail all that occurred. He is held to answer to a charge of murder, and a few months later is sentenced to San Quentin Penitentiary for life by a jury which, unimpressed by his plea of self defense, has returned a verdict of second degree murder. Shortly afterwards, he is delivered into the custody of the warden of San Quentin Prison. New arrivals today, McIntosh? I sir. One. Where from? Oakland. Second degree murder. Mm. Have you been taken care of? Yes, sir. Mug printed, chairs and outfitted. Mm. Waiting outside now if you want to talk to him. Yes, I'll talk to him. Bring you in. Aye, sir. Come in here, 7612. Aye, you. My name is Scholar Yes. You're off that when you walk through that gate out there. From now on, you're 7612. You see, the number's printed across your jacket. The warden wants to see you. Right this way. Here he is, sir. Uh, thanks, Mike. Well, that'll be all for friends. Aye, sir. Well, you don't look much like a murderer to me. I'm not a murderer. I am a composer. A composer? <laughs> well, that's fine. We'll find you a place in the printing plant. You do not understand, I You do not despise, I, I like music. Oh, you like music. <laughs> all I want is a chance to finish my symphony. I see. What is your name? Marjorie. Scholars, Marjorie. Well, look here, Marjorie. Let's start off right. Let's understand each other, you and I. You'll have to work up here. You're going to start a life that is completely different. You'll have to adjust yourself to a set of circumstances completely different from any you've ever known before. And you won't find many people sympathetic with your desires to finish a symphony. I'm willing to work, Warden. I suppose I've committed a crime. I'll pay for it. I'll do anything you say. You have shaved my head. You've taken away my name. That is all right. I don't care what you do to me. Just so long as I can go on working. All I want is a piano so I can finish my symphony. A piano? <laughs> well, Margo, ourselves don't come for it for piano. But I, I must work on my symphony. Well, we can place you in the prison orchestra. They look out once a week. Once a week? But when can I work on my symphony? I'm afraid, Margo, that you can't. <laughs> some harmony on my symphony. Your symphony? You're worrying about your symphony when I can't even get these doom heads to play one to pay right. <laughs> now you save your symphony for when you get parole. Now, all together, boys, once that long. Huh? What's your hurry? You're not going any place. Five years, ten years, a life. No piano. Nothing but scraps of paper and bits of pencil. Nothing to beat out time. Nothing to help me get the notes on paper. Nothing. What is that? This machinery. These wheels. These belts. They have rhythm. They have tempo. My 
of so-called musicians I had ever heard in my life. I intend to change all that. I intend to make this a real orchid. Do not worry. There will be no tail tied in water. We will handle this just between ourselves. I will see the job through. I have plenty of time. I am here for life. Now that we understand each other, let's get to work. First violins and bosses, then clarinets. Start on higher. Come down to E and D, uh, bosses and, and the bass. D minor chord on second beat sustained. Let's say that very broadly. You ready? Good. Now, once more. More forty this time. Hey, what is this? A memory chord? Where's the parts of it, sir? You'll get them soon. I am still writing it. Under Mobro's expert musicianship, the San Quentin Prison Orchestra becomes a really fine musical organization, and its fame spreads all over the country. Slowly, Mobro wins the hard-boiled members of his aggregation to a staunch personal loyalty. And many of the fine musicians he develops and sends forth from the grim walls of the old prison. Slowly, surely, Mobdo worked from his symphony, aided by the bitterly won cooperation of his musicians in helping him solve many intricate problems of scoring. Finally, it's completed, and seriously, Mobdo rehearses his men to prepare the composition for its first public playing at the holiday entertainment within the prison walls. At last, the great day arrives. Proudly, the warden announces to the inmates from the guests from the outside but the San Quentin Orchestra is about to play for the first time the symphony number no. one of Carlos Madro. Trembling with emotion, Madro takes the stand, raises his baton, crashes into the opening chords of his great work. As the symphony progresses, the jazz-minded convicts squirm in their feet. But a guest of the warden, seated in the front row, listens with keen interest. That's great stuff. Yes, I'm mighty proud of that boy. This part of it he calls the rhythm of the jute mill. Yeah, and the rhythm of the jute mill, eh? Yeah. I don't suppose there's any chance of taking this out without the vaudeville to it. Well, hardly. Yeah, I didn't think so. 
too bad. I could clean up a fortune with them. And a great attraction. Undoubtedly. But there's hardly any sense in carrying a 40 man crime wave around the country the way things are right now. Yeah, that thing he's playing is good stuff. Yeah, I could do something with that. What do you mean? Well, get this published. But I suppose there'd be an objection to that, too. No, I don't see why. Marjorie's done a very nice thing there. If he can realize all he's entitled to it. After all, the state pays fifteen hundred dollars a year by using him as band leader instead of an outsider. Uh, would there be any chance of me seeing him after the concert? Certainly. I'll have him sent to the office. Composition tonight, Mardo. I want to congratulate you. Mr. Signora, I've worked a long time on it. Yeah, you can see that you have. I like particularly the third movement. <laughs> the divorce. I call that the rhythm of the youth there. Yeah, so the Warden told me. Should I, should I get the hopelessness and the suffering into it, Mr. Cole? Yeah, I think you did. Did you feel what I was driving at? The plight of the people? That, that we are all convicts? Our souls in prison within our bodies? Even a life term in a sloppy prison of flesh. But we, we labor there in that mortal youth will hopelessly until death arose us. That is what I was trying to say of the fourth movement. The freedom, the parole that death brings, the, the transcending spirit solving all problems in eternal peace. Yeah, 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 I got all that. They're very good. Very good indeed. They're a fine piece of work. Now, what I wanted to ask you, Mother, hmm? would you be willing to have this work published? To have it published? To bring this message to the world? Will you publish it for me? Can you do it for me? Can and I will. Wonderful. What is This is more than I ever expected. More than I hoped could happen. To be able to bring my message to the world. We will do that, Mondo. I can assure you. We will make recordings of it so that people can play it in their homes. Recordings of it? I need to call my Nifico. Of course. You should to tell whoever makes the record what I have just told you. It's it all there. It's all in the music. Of course it is. And although I've done up a little agreement here, if you'll just sign it. You promise you will publish it and you'll make recordings of it? Yeah. Yes, and I shall give it to him. I'll sign it. There is only one thing more to your code. Yeah, what's that? Send me the first record they make, will you? I certainly will. Thank the you, very sir. first record will come yes, to you. Thank you, Senor. Thank you very much. Cassie Carlos Madro walks the prison yard on clouds. His imprisonment means nothing to him now. He tastes the sweet nectar of artistic achievement and already is planning his symphony number two, his next great work. And then one day he receives a summons to the warden's office. Uh, come in, Madro. You send for me, senor? Yes. The record comes. Ah, let me hear it. Let me hear it. Right away. I had my electric phonograph bought over from the house so that you would get every note. Please turn it on. Turn it on quickly, please. Very well. Here it is. What? That is not my symphony. Of course it is. The Nari Symphony Orchestra. That is a band. Here. Let me see the record. There. Here you are. On print and mark. Convict number 7612. My rhythm of the duty played by a cheap band. Do you want to hear the rest of it? Oh, thank you. Well, save your record. I do not want it. Why, what's the matter, Bartle? Where are you going? I'm going back 
Having saved the state $10,000 by his services as orchestra leader, the man we have called Carlos Madro was finally paroled in 1929, a broken and sick old man to be deported to his native Spain. It is said that through the success of his published music, he realized more than $100,000 during the time he was in prison, and that this sum was held by influential friends who sponsored his parole. But for him, spiritual life ended when his dream of artistic success was shattered. Having suffered one stroke prior to his release from prison, it is doubtful if he is alive today. Calling all cars is a presentation of the Rio Grande Oil Company, refiners and marketers of Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline. <laughs> Calling all cars, attention all cars. The cancellation broadcast 70 regarding a murder. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. and produced by William N. Robeson. Original music for tonight's broadcast was composed and arranged by Albert K. Malott. The orchestra was under the direction of Frederick Shaw.